Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an equation. We have x squared plus 81 x squared divided by x plus 9 squared is equal to 40. So I'll try to present two methods here. Uh, let's see how this goes. But typically when you are confronted with such a problem, you know, the typical approach is, you know, just go ahead and make a common denominator, so on and so forth. If you do that, you're going to end up with a quartic equation. You're going to get an x squared from here and you're going to get an x squared from here. When you multiply those, you'll get a fourth degree equation, which is going to be somewhat complicated. So we're going to use a different approach. And my approach involves completing the square, sort of, right? So just notice that the expression that I have here can be written as x squared plus 9x over x plus 9 squared is equal to 440. Now, as you know, if you're trying to complete the square, you have to look at the terms you have. So you could have something like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared as your perfect square, or you could have the minus version, right? Okay. Which one am I going to go by? And let me tell you that I'm going to be using the second one, uh, because for our purpose, and you realize this in a little bit why I did that, uh, it's going to be better. So what I'm going to do then is basically I will be uh, subtracting that term that's missing and then adding that. So I'll take care of this term right here. So what does that look like? Well, it's going to be like x squared minus. So here, let's make one thing clear that our a is x and b is going to be uh, 9x over x plus 9. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to write this as a perfect square and the missing term in this case is going to be 2 times right x times 9x over x plus 9 okay plus I have the 9x over x plus 9 squared so it's kind of like this a squared b squared minus 2ab okay make sense since I just added something to the expression, right? I'm actually, never mind. I subtracted it. I have to add it. So I'm just adding the same expression. But if you think about it, well, let's just write it this way first. Okay. So I subtracted and I added the same expression. So what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to take this and put it as a difference, um, not difference, uh, as a perfect square. So what is it going to look like? Well, it's going to look like x minus 9x over x plus 9 squared, right? Okay, you can see here a squared minus 2ab plus b squared turns into a minus b quantity squared plus, and if I multiply these, it's going to give me 18x squared over x plus 9 and the whole thing is equal to 40. Okay, this is our first method. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and make a common denominator at this point. It makes sense. So I'll be getting x squared plus 9x minus 9x all over x plus 9. And obviously this expression will be squared. And then I'll add the 18x squared over x plus 9. Okay, this is still equal to 40. See what happens here. The 9x is going to cancel out. So this is the very reason I go by the minus version because this is when I can simplify things. Okay, so now it's going to get nicer. So you'll notice that you get this expression here. And now I want to do separate the 18 here so that you can see better what I'm driving at. Okay. And then I'll put uh, bring the 40 over here. And hopefully this is more clear now. Okay. What am I going to do? I'm going to use substitution, right? So I'm going to call this guy here, which is x squared over x plus 9. Let's call that something. How about you? Okay, cool. I like you. It's not like I like you, but it's I like you. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute that. It's going to give me u squared plus 18u minus 40. Awesome. And I think this is factorable, isn't it? Well, I'm, I was thinking about 8 and 5, but that doesn't work. 10 and 4, uh, maybe something greater than that. Okay, how about 20 and two, but one of them has to be negative. Here we go. That's it, right? Sum and product. Satisfied? So this gives me u plus 20 multiplied by u minus 2 
being equal to zero. And as a result, I get u equals negative 20 and u equals u equals two. Okay, awesome. But what is u? u is that, that so x squared over x plus nine. Now, we get a quadratic here, right? So let's go ahead and cross multiply. x squared is equal to negative 20x minus 180. And then if I bring everything to the left-hand side, then I should be getting something like this. Okay. So this is kind of interesting because what happens is um, this doesn't have any real solutions, right? How do we know that? Well, you can check the discriminant and you'll notice that this doesn't really give us any real solutions. I mean, you can go ahead and find the complex solutions. And this is what I would probably do if I proceeded with the solutions. And let me tell you how I know that it doesn't have the solutions because half of 20 is 10. If I square it, I get 100. So by adding 100 to both sides, right, I can actually make it a perfect square, but the right hand side is going to stay negative. So this is why we don't have real solutions. But if you're looking for complex, you can go that way. Let's take a look at the second branch. Do you think we'll get solutions from here? Hopefully. Now, what I can do is I can do the same thing, distribute and bring everything over to the left. And hopefully this will be good. Okay, two numbers whose product is negative 18 and whose sum is negative two. Do they exist? Okay, I'm looking at the integer solutions. They don't exist. So forget about factoring. What we're going to do then is use the quadratic formula or completing the square. Let's do completing the square. Okay, it'll be a different approach. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding the magical number, which is in this case one to both sides. And that's going to give me 19. And the left hand side is going to be a perfect square. That's the goal, right? And now I can split it up. As you know, uh, I can write it as square root of 19 or negative square root of 19, okay? There are two numbers whose square is 19 in other words, and these are all real. And from here, I should be getting x equals one plus square root of 19 and x equals one minus square root of 19. All right, awesome, great. So these are gonna be our solutions. And as you see, there are no other real solutions. Okay, and since we haven't really squared both sides or something, these are not extraneous. These are actually legitimate solutions. Okay, I wanna go back here and I just wanna say something. If instead of proceeding with the minus version here, if you proceeded with the plus, you would run into some difficulties, okay? That's why it's better to do it this way. Now, I told you at the beginning that I was gonna show you two methods, so let's go ahead and talk about our second method, which is kind of cool and hopefully uh, this will give you a chance to compare two methods, you know, and kind of, uh, you know, decide which method is better for you. Okay, cool. Now, my original equation was what? x squared plus 81x squared divided by x plus 9 quantity squared, and that was equal to 40, I think, right? Okay. Now, here's my second method. And of course, my second method also involves writing this as a perfect square, not in that sense, but kind of like using the parentheses and kind of making it more organized, maybe like this, okay? Okay, here's the second method, and this is kind of interesting. Normally, when you have an equation in a single variable, you try to solve it, right? Or if you have a system, you try to substitute or eliminate, get rid of one of the variables, because you can't really solve two variables at the same time. So we're gonna do the opposite here, which is kind of weird, but it's effective. Okay, so what is that method? Well, that method is calling this expression something else. Haven't we done that before? Well, we have done it, but after we completed the square, it was a different story. Just a little different, okay. So what is this gonna look like? I'm gonna call this y just for the you know sake of change. And then I'll be getting something like this, x squared plus y squared equals 40. Okay, cool. Two numbers whose squares add up to 40, but they're real numbers, so we're not looking for integer solutions, so this is not super helpful, right? It is going to be helpful after you kind of look at what you did. Okay, what did I do? Well, you said that, okay, this equals, let this equal y, right? But what is that supposed to mean? Okay, let's cross multiply and find out. So this should give me 9x is equal to yx plus 9y. 
I'm, I'm looking at this like, this doesn't make sense. What, what did I do? This is like a mess, right? What did I get myself into? Well, if you put the 9y on the left-hand side, things are going to look nicer. And if you haven't still seen it, I'll just write xy because alphabetical order kind of like obsessed with that, right? Okay, maybe OCD. So, what am I going to do? Oh, now I see it. I can take out a 9, right? Beautiful. How's that beautiful? Well, I can relate x minus y and xy here and over there too. How? Well, you can write this as... Okay, fine. Change the color. I can write this as x minus y squared. Again, that completing the square thingy, right? Plus, because I am getting an unwanted negative 2xy, so I have to undo it, right? This is not adding something to both sides. It's just, you know, taking care of things, you know, making sure that they're equivalent. Okay. You see what I'm talking about? Okay. Look at that. I got this and I got that. Beautiful, right? How's that beautiful? Well, I have now two variables, but they're kind of quadratic. They're nice. What is that supposed to mean? Let's talk. Let's talk more about it in detail. So this is what I'm trying to say. Let me put it together as a system. So hopefully that'll help you see things better. Sometimes you just copy something over, you know, and then it kind of helps you see things. You don't have to like, you know, keep thinking about the same thing. Like, you know, sometimes it, you hit a dead end, right? Okay. Anyways, so what am I going to do? I'm going to use substitution, but in a very smart way. What is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that I'm going to be, do we have a light color, a nice light color, maybe light blue. How about that? Okay. We haven't done, used that much. So cool. Sounds good. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call because you see X minus Y repeats and X, Y repeats. So I can say, okay, what if X minus Y is called A? And no, I don't like A. Okay, I'm gonna use something else. Well, X minus Y is a difference, so why don't we call that D? Okay, fine. And X, Y is a product, so why don't we call that P? That makes sense, okay? Now I'll be getting something like this. D squared plus two P equals 40. And then this is nine D is equal to P. Wow, that's amazing, right? Well, why? Because now I got P in terms of D, I can use substitution, go ahead and plug that in, and you're good to go. Let's see. D squared plus 2 times P, which is 9D, right? Not 90 the number, but 9 times D is equal to 40. And this should give me, hmm, that looks familiar, right? Well, let's leave the 40 there because you know what? We're going to add something. Half of 18 is 9. 9 squared is 81. So I'll be adding 81 to both sides because I want to complete the square. Adding 81 to 40 is going to give me 121. Beautiful. I like it because it's 11 squared. Then I'll be getting something good. All right. Awesome. I mean, from here you can split it up, right? So D minus 9 is either 11 or negative 11, right? which means that D is either two or D is negative 20. Okay, cool, great. So now we do have a nice relationship between P and D. So if you go ahead and plug in D there, you'll get the P right away. So P is nine times D. So here P is gonna be 18 and here P is gonna be what? Nine times negative 20 is negative 180. Okay, cool. Now we have this pair and we have that pair. Let's go back and look at what they meant, right? Well, D means the difference. Remember, we named them that way so that it would be more meaningful or maybe intuitive. So let's go ahead and open up another um, color, maybe this one. Okay. So this equation means, or system, I'd rather say, uh, X minus Y is equal to 2 and X, Y is equal to 18. Okay, so do you know how to solve the system? Well, that should be easy because I can use substitution. For example, you can replace y with uh, x minus 2 or x with y plus 2. Let's just do x equals y plus 2. That seems easier. So it's going to look like y times y plus 2 is 18. And then you can just go ahead and solve this. Now, 
are there two numbers who that are two apart? Uh, it didn't work in the previous case, remember? We were talking about this and it didn't work earlier. So let's go ahead and expand it because this is not factorable, unfortunately. But you can add one to both sides like before, you know. And then from here, you're going to be getting something like this and then something like this, right? Okay. And the rest follows. It's similar, so I'm just going to, you know, well, it's not necessarily similar, but um, something like that, you know? So we don't have to go all the way down. But how about this one? Well, this one is going to give you x minus y. x minus y is equal to negative 20 and xy is equal to negative 180. If I go ahead and substitute x, replace x with y minus 20, and that's going to look like y times y minus 20 is equal to negative 180. And then from here, I should be getting y squared minus 20y. And as you know, you know the rest of the story. Basically, you're not going to get real solutions from here. Just like the first method, I mean, you can just comment on which method you like better. If you ask me, I like the first method better, uh, even though the second one seems um, somewhat easier. But uh, they kind of have the similar ideas. And basically, that's my thought. Okay, you can disagree or agree with that. But that's it for this video. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, these are the answers one more time. And take care. I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.